things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. So tonight, the truth is going to be unfiltered and full of flavor. Please welcome Dana McCool and Eric Ramundo, bringing you the smoking truth. The Friday after the Friday, yes. the Friday, right? The, it was the Friday. Yeah, the wig out Friday, right? Oh and God. so anyways, uh, anyway, Dana McCool, how are you doing today, my dear? <laughs> I saw you coming in all like, I'm sitting there kind of going, what? What, what? What's going Wait on with you? Wait a minute. Right yeah, yeah, what's going on with you? You know, I think that I'm just like living in a state of annoying, being annoyed today. I don't know okay. why. It's just small stuff. I went to okay. the dispensary today. I can I can empathize with that a little bit. All right. To pick up my medication. Yeah, yeah, quote unquote medication. Got it. Right. Yeah. yeah. One hour. What, really? One hour. Well, because remember, some- I, remember, I, I so I talked to you. We'll get to all our stuff in a minute here. But remember, I I called you today. Yeah. Because I hadn't spoke to you all week. Yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like letting you be because I know you like the the um, the gala was like a big thing for you mm-hmm. and so forth. And I just wanted you needed time to decompress, kind of re- do after action, whatever. And I was just busy t- this week as well too. I was mm-hmm. all over the place. So I was like, all right. So I said, man. So then my, I told you, my wife, she's like, hey, have you talked to Daniel this week? I said, no, I haven't, man. That's strange because normally I, I like. We we'll, talk every other day. Yeah. I said, well, we'll talk. Like she'll normally like reach out to me. Like by Tuesday, she'll either reach out to me or I'm kind of going, hey, what are you thinking for the show this week? Because we had mm-hmm. nothing unless we have something planned, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyways, but I'm going through the week and then I call you today. I'm like, hey, um, so how you doing? <laughs> and then you're like, well, all right. And then I said, hey, I'm actually going to try and get Cigar Hustler a little early today because yeah, yeah. like the last several weeks, it's been like running right to and the end. And you fucking cursed yourself. And then I just came in. I was just like, all right, what? Yeah. Did I curse? You cursed yourself oh, like cur- when oh, you said I'm that. So- I said, like, wait, I'm trying to be good. <laughs> so did. anyways, um, so yeah, I told you, I was like, hey, Dana, so I'm going to try and get there early. And sure enough, like within like 10 minutes, I get a call and it's like, boom. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I still got here. I, well, I got here, you know, the, I think whatever time it was, 3, mm-hmm. 10, whatever. I got here like 20, 20, 25 yeah. minutes or something. Like that. Well, what time did I come in? 3.33. Yeah. So then <laughs> I see, I'm like, I hear like, mo- the motorcycle outside. Oh, I said, that's got to be Dana. Yeah. So then. Steven's all like, hey, hey, she goes to me, like, his head nodding, like, hey, she's here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then you come into the studio, and I'm like, I'm just having a good chit chat with OG over here. And you come in, like, and, she, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> dropping your helmet, <laughs> like you're about to trip over the wires over here and kill yourself. Like, hey, girl, <laughs> don't let that be your demise, the wires in the studio. <laughs> Anyways, um, so here we are. Anyways, here we are. <laughs> the week that was <laughs> for poor old Dana McCoy. And, and here you, and so I kind of, F myself a little bit, All right. but I feel like you got the crappier end of the stick a little bit because, like, you thought you were going to be, like, hey, I got to spot him at two o'clock. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm good. no, forget about and it. I'm yeah. like sitting kind of, where the hell is Dana McCool at? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At yeah. the dispensary. God. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, I make jokes yeah. about it, right? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm really advocating for for marijuana. I know that we already use it medicinally. I think that if everybody smoked pot, we'd be a much more mellow civilization. Do you know what I mean? Because you know what? You're probably right. We would. We, we, it would be. You would be talking about sharing like, you know, snack packs and stuff up in the house rather than and everybody all this would be partisan singing. crap. Everybody would be singing. Yeah, don't, kumbaya. Don't worry, be happy, man. Yeah, roll me up and smoke me when yeah. I die. <laughs> you heard that, right, Snoop? I know. Talking yeah. about Willie Nelson. Everybody says, when you asked, when polled, do you want all these celebrities are polled. Yeah. They talk about what is the most stoned you ever been? Snoop Dogg, like uh, Jerry uh, McConnell, like a, like yeah, some yeah. celebrities I've seen. Like, what is the most stoned you've ever been? And everybody says with Willie Nelson. Yeah. Nobody can hold a candle to Willie Nelson. Willie, Snoop, uh, when Snoop uh, says Willie, that, Willie is the ori- he's the he's the OG. He's the OG OG. W- Willie's the OG. I remember yeah. having a couple of his forty fives. I know I'm dating myself a little bit. His forty mm-hmm. fives. And just sitting there, anyways. Willie's the OG though, but yeah, he's he been on this thing for a long time. Hey man, and just did it. but you got the sense that Willie was always mellow. And why? Yeah, why? Probably, Marijuana. P- part of it's probably his own demeanor, but then the rest of it is probably like sitting there, just you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna stress over that. That's why Snoop is. Yeah. Snoop used to be a thug. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He started on the crypt though. Yeah. Now he got his own crypt walk. Yeah. His own dance. But I go, he's, he's got but, his own stuff. But he's got, got Martha feeling. turned out. I know, but I feel like Snoop has always been like low key, even when he was doing what he's doing back in the day when he was a teenager. I always this feeling he was always kind of that guy, like, hey, hey, my hey, man. I don't want to. I don't want to shoot you. Hey, at my all, man. man. Yeah, 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 hey, my yeah. man. I don't want to shoot you. 
if I have to, I'll do it. But I will, man. Yeah, you you know. And then you feel so like, oh, okay, Snoop, don't don't do it then. Hey, hey, can you just help a brother out? Just go ahead and pay me, man. Go ahead. I'll let you, brother, I'll let you go this week. I'll let you slide. I'll let you slide this week, brother, but I'm going to come at you next week. I'm going to have to kill you. I'm going to kill you next week. I'm going to have to jank you next week. What are we doing here? <laughs> snoop, snoop, doggy dog. Anyways, let's get back. All right. what, Anyways. What is wrong with us? Today? It's Friday, so it is what it yeah. is. It so, was, listen. I got, listen. So, we, hey, everyone, please don't forget to catch us on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, I think the subscriber count went up on YouTube a little bit. Definitely up on Facebook some more, especially with this whole fuel farm thing where I'll get to and just briefly on it. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Like I said, YouTube, OG puts the graphics, you subscribe, do whatever you got to do, and then you get the notifications. Same thing with like all the podcast stuff. You subscribe to the podcast, like you know Spotify, Podbean, whatever. Yeah. You'll get the notifications. And mm -hmm. then uh, don't forget, I also put them on Facebook this way. The Eric, Facebook people Eric, put them Eric, on Eric, Eric, What? Who's your lover? So, the lover this week... Is Postani War Bear? I knew you were going to get that. I knew that. <laughs> I just knew that. I, so I had one about. I was talking to OG about this. And I was talking to Greg as mm -hmm. well about it. And I was just kind of like, so I had one about it two years ago. And man, when you lit it up and smoked it, it like started spicy and it was strong from get go and did not let up. But you know, you smoke some cigars like and the soft little strong and they yeah. mellow out. Mm -hmm. This one did not. So then I'm like asking, and so I've been hesitant a little bit, but you know, I'm supportive of like the team. Right, right. So then I was like, I lit it up and I was just like, Greg goes, hey, just try it out. I mean, it's, all right. So I tried it out. I'm like, I'm coming downstairs. I'm like, hey, this is actually pretty good. So I talking to Gene, he's telling me that this may be what the difference is a little bit. And But I told him, I said, dude, this is like, this smokes like your good old fashioned, like a good solid classic Maduro cigar. And mm -hmm. I'm just kind of, I'm like, hey, I like it. Good. I do. So good. it's there. I, I haven't it. had one yet, but I'm getting into it this Yeah. This weekend. I've got so many I options like for the weekend. Oh. I, I do it this weekend. I, I don't know. Maybe that's part of my analysis paralysis. I do have a few between my birthday that passed not too long ago and my son and Which, my wife. Which, you know, man, stuff, by the then, way, yeah, dude, yeah. I like, I didn't get to see you on know, your it's, birthday. It's you okay. were with your real friends uh, on your uh, birthday. Well, were you, that, with, were we you saw, at 305? Well, th that was a week early. Okay. And they, they kind of did a little week early because right. then on my day, my mm -hmm. actual day, I no, I was at home, man. Okay. Just relaxing, chilling, and my son brought You were just getting a being sick too yeah probably uh, maybe i don't know uh oh you know what that was too i think that was the week before i think i was heading up towards um yeah that was a, that was a sunday before tallahassee i went up for committee week and then also on top of that i was going to new jersey that following weekend as well mm -hmm. so but I, I just stayed home and relaxed and i had cigars so i had and then last week I stopped in when we did the show, uh, when I did the show with the ladies from the fuel farm stuff. And then uh, HVC was here, uh -huh. the guy, Lorenzo, I think is his name. Yeah, that's his name, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, yeah. And nice guy to talk to for a couple of minutes. I was like, oh, man. And so I bought a small pack of his uh, different ABCs and mm -hmm. I told OG that I like the pan caliente. I haven't had the yep. rest of them. I haven't gone to the rest of them yet, but that one I did like as well. So yeah. anyways. Well, you were feeling mighty fine Friday night. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, you know me, I'm all about having a good time, man. You know? Dude, here's the thing, and I know don't, this. Don't, don't be blowing my spot, girls. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, I'm not, but listen, yeah. you and the doctor look good. I appreciate it, man. I'm Thank serious. So she always looks hot, though. She, yeah. I, so it's How did you get her, by the way? Uh, well, I was her corpsman. I was her medic. In the, in the, when she was a Marine Corps and I was in the Navy, and I was attached to Camp Pendleton, her, the base. Mm hmm and so the battalion a station you know they that's the area in the area that she's in right mm -hmm. and then so i'm the one of the corpsmen that was in there and i checked her in and she was coming in from she was coming from the ammo area uh, area 43 which is like the ammo area for mm -hmm. supply battalion that's mm -hmm. where her, what her mos was so if you're in the military that was like her right right i get you her job description job description sorry yeah yeah so she was checking into the battalion and she came in one day and i was and i had heard her name once or twice being mentioned by somebody else and they're like i said and i saw the name tape on her on her cami and i was like mm -hmm. Oh, you're Crespo. And she goes, why? I was like, damn. All right, girl. <laughs> you go. So I checked her in. And then what had happened was that my wife, she hates needles. Yeah. And I was actually, I was so good. And I'm going to, I'm going to refrain from saying too much because this could go down very quickly. Now, come on. I want to hear it. No, because I was going to say, I poked it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It's going to disintegrate not, quickly. Yeah. So Don't. I just. You I, poked it right the, the first blood. time. I drew the blood. You just say it. You I, poked it right the first time. I drew blood. <laughs> <laughs> I drew blood on her from the, and and I've uh -huh. always been very. I was always very even like the kids like in the hospital uh, when I came to the hospital. Uh -huh. They always had me do with the kids the butterfly hero. stuff. So Go anyway. ahead, hero. So and then it, well, anyways, it just went from there. But after so. you poked her, then what? 
Um, you know, and then that's all she wrote, man. Then 28 years, almost 20, yeah, 28 years later, here, almost 28 years later, here we are. So that's all. I'm not going to say anymore. Anyways, Dr. Um, Ramondo. But yeah, so it was good. I had a nice time. And mm-hmm. and then some of us carried it out afterwards on the side over there. I know y'all did. You had your, there was a separate party going on outside, which I loved. Everybody was just, yeah. everybody was having a really good I time. So. I think everybody was having a good time. You guys, they play a little Spanish, and I got in the floor for a couple minutes. And then, uh, yes, you Mer- did. Commissioner Avila Vasquez. She's like she cut in between me and my wife. She's like, come on in, all right. <laughs> I and, said, and, and then uh, and then a little bit. I think probably about 15, 20, 20 minutes before, maybe a little bit sooner than that, before you guys were getting ready to start shutting down. You know, uh, three oh five and I went to. We wanted to go have a cigar, and mm-hmm. we went. Out, I know they had a bar out there, so we went out there to have you know whatever. And yep. then um, and then a few more people joined. A few more people joined, and then my wife came out. And then we had like you know t- like twelve people outside, yeah, no. and we were just like. Ah! You know, it was yeah. great, you know, so yeah. it was good. Yeah, man. thank you guys for yeah. your support. I will tell you yeah. something, too, that the Guns and Hoses calendar was wildly popular. Was you can, it? Yeah, Oh, my you. God, yeah. yes, it was. Yeah, you guys, you guys yes. had some good ones over there. <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm did. not gay, but I'm just saying. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was I was good. like, oh, so, oh he's quality, uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was amazing, and they are still on sale. You can go to um, VolushaGunsAndHoses.com and purchase a calendar, and we ship it to you. So it's a really great cause to support and go uh, ahead and buy the calendar yeah, folks come woo, on woo, call. Woo, 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 and i'm going to say this also yeah. and he's not going to care because mm. he gets my sense of humor mm. okay but i want it to be stated for the record that i'm probably one of only maybe a handful of women that have ever gotten mike chitwood to take his shirt off <laughs> i saw that in volusia <laughs> county so i saw he take, I, I saw him taking it off i was just sitting there going oh boy here yeah. goes the sheriff you go you go sheriff <laughs> That's what he, said. he was walking we were walking up to the stage together yeah and he looked at me and he said i'm not letting them firefighters beat me why yeah. not me <laughs> and i said okay sheriff whatever you want to do and we go on stage he said he said I'm going to take my shirt off. And I was like, and you're going to hold my gun. And I said, okay, boss, whatever you say. He got up there, though, man. He raised some money quite quickly, though. He did. He did. He did. $5,500. Yeah, he did. For, for that, for the trip. I, oh I, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. I know. I saw that. I was just like, all right. And so I saw him afterwards. He came. He said, "How come you didn't come out?" I said, "No, no, no. You're doing just fine." <laughs> Eric still got a little bit of pudge, pudge. Sheriff, you're doing just good. Don't worry. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. He did. Yeah, maybe next year we'll do uh, the legislative calendar. Ooh. We'll go up there. God, get some. You're not gonna make a lot of money. Don't just do me a favor. Don't do that. You're not gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> okay, it passed. I was thinking maybe, but. It passed. Oh my god! Yeah, we want people to feel good. I it was it was a good event. Mm-hmm. I want to see. Uh, obviously, I definitely want to see you guys make this a, a, a good. It's annual an annual event. thing. We've already saved the date for next year, September twenty seventh of next year. All, right. All the financials should be ready to release. Like I think in two weeks, yeah. right? Because right. we're getting money in, still yeah, getting yeah. money in from okay. donors and settling up and yada yada. So we're going to make that available, and then we'll do the check presentation. Um, and we're going to the Orlando if Magic you game. Can, if you can disclose mm-hmm. uh, an estimation, if you think, I know some stuff is still coming in. Mm-hmm. What do you think, you guys? Twenty five, thirty thousand. 30,000. Really? Yeah. Good for you, man. Awesome. Yeah. First right. time out. Awesome. Good for you. That's good, man. That's hey, hey, I mean, hey, that's no, that's no, that's not, that's not, you know, that's not a, nothing, nothing to sneeze, sneeze at. at. Yeah, yeah. As they say. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. Good for you, girl. That's good. Well, it's all going to go towards a good cause anyways. It's helping out a couple the, some of the folks are actually, I think all of them, all three of them, I think it was a two or three, three of them, right? You said you, that were there, I guess there were, um, yeah, that you, 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 you intend yeah. to give them the money to, to help yes. out with folks. Yes. That didn't, two of that them. Didn't and then three, yeah. we're looking at, um, we're looking at another one, which I'll talk about at a different yeah, time because no it's That's an fine. individual. Yeah. So, anyways, yes, it will be an annual event. Okay. So, anyways, cool. let's do the roundup if we can. Um. Also, I want to okay. give a shout out to the ladies from last week on the fuel farm. Okay, go they for did, it. They did a good job, uh, ladies. Um, Lindsay Pate mm-hmm. and Rebecca Magali. I, Magali, I believe, is their last name, and uh, both of them were on the show last week. And did they, me proud watching my show and watching them on here raising the yeah. awareness and having some really meaningful conversations. So, so I had time to. Ref- I listened to the show this week, and I just had some time to reflect on it a little tiny bit because mm-hmm. you know I come in, and you know a lot of times I'll feed off for you, and then just but I always kind of know where my boundaries at and what I want to say or can't say or mm-hmm. whatever. Right for the most part, I try to walk a fine line. That said. I had some time to reflect on this whole thing a little okay. bit. And I will tell you this, that I don't know where these ideas come from sometimes. 
And, you know, and I've, I've said multiple times, I'm neither anti-development. I am neither, I am not, you know, anti-fuel, you know, storage for if it's going to help the state of Florida with, you know, fuel supply line stuff. So that way, you know, during hurricanes, whatever, but just your initial reaction and thought, and that, I'm going to stick with this one. That's my gut telling me, and I'm sticking with this one no matter what. And nobody's going to pull me off this, um, off this one, which is that is the stupidest idea. And I'm sorry if it's offending some folks, man, but I'm telling you it is the most jacked up stupid idea to put something like that exactly where, right where it's at. Right mm-hmm. in the middle, to me, as far as I'm con- concerned, a community. Mm-hmm. I've seen the map. They've shown me the map. We had good discussions on it last week. And people, once again, I, I say you can make your own decision how you feel about this whole thing. Me, personally, it is just stupid. And the fact that Belvin deer is not even like like this is the first time they're going to do something on this on this level i just kind of go i what are we doing here now i know that they own i guess they own the property or whatever it is and you know and I, you know, it goes back to i know you can but then somewhere at some point in time the county or city has to sit here and kind of go is this the right thing in this area for us or is there a way we can incentivize them to go someplace else in some capacity right i, I i'd be even probably okay with that you know but man, like right there, I was just like, anyways, it just, and then I, it's interesting because I said on the show, I was flying into New Jersey with my wife and obviously there's Newark air, airports, not too far. And then you see Elizabeth and you see all the, the fuel storage tankers that have been there for decades. Mm-hmm. And it just, I, once again, I look at that and I kind of go, God, it just, it's so forget about be, the ideas being unsightly, but I remember as a kid just smelling it and it just, it never smelled good. And they told me about the one that's out in Tampa and then they have like 10 more of these things going up. And, and, and once again, in of itself, 10 of them, I don't necessarily mind so long as we're being mindful as to where exactly are they going. And then also, let's be a little rigorous, too. Can I also say that? I'm going to say that, too. Can we be rigorous ensuring um, that they're going to use um, good you know, I want good technology, good techniques, whatever they're doing? Because once I always go back to Florida folks... I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. I don't care if you want to be an eco-warrior or you're not an eco-warrior. I, I'm just telling you right now, we have a great treasure. And you, I don't care. Who, and if you talk to people in Tallahassee who've been around long enough, Republicans and Democrats, you know, the Florida and aquifer, that is our lifeblood. Yep. We screw that up, Florida's gone. I, I'm out. I'm done. I'm, I'm moving to Tennessee. I'm out of here. Yeah. That's my my take on it. I, I know it's kind of harsh, but it, you have to be a little bit because it it's- It is it's, not. It, yeah. it should be, listen, it should be, and I say this a lot, it should be prohibitively expensive yeah. to live in Florida. I know you say that, and I know I don't want to agree and, with you, but I understand where you're coming but you from. You understand where I'm coming from, because we have a great burden. We have great resources to protect, and I'm sorry, there are no shortcuts to taking care of the environment as delicate as ours. Sorry. Yeah. But you live here. If you live here, you're going to pay to keep it up. You I, know? I was just on a, uh, uh, so yesterday, uh, I was doing a tour over in Wakawa Park. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So Live Wildly was there. Great uh, foundation. With, you know, they're w- working with the Wildlife uh, Corridor folks and the, and the Wildlife Corridor Foundation, mm-hmm. along with the uh, State Park Foundation as well. Everybody's coming together. And, and here's, you know, here's something to be very proud of. Regardless of politics, is the very top for you, okay, and mm-hmm. in our state. Here's what I'll tell you: these are folks who are truly committed to doing what they're doing with our with our wildlife, mm-hmm. right, and everything else that is that is Florida, and we are the model, folks. They've said it; they've gone around the country. We are the model for what they want to see happen in every, every other, other state, state that had that wants to do a wildlife corridor. And so I'm going to Wakawa Park, and Wakawa Park to me is like the Statue of Liberty, right? I grew up in New Jersey my whole life and never once went to the statue. It was always there. And I hadn't, and I've never been to Wakawa Park, and I know it's always been a treasure of ours here, among other parks in the state of Florida, and I'm just driving. Through. And then the, the history, mm-hmm. oh my God, did not know this little fun fact. There was a train that went from Tavares to Sanford, and in the middle... Of that was a small little town that you'll never ever hear about, which is called. Oh my God! Uh, Sh- Sorry, says S H L. Uh, oh my God! I came up with the guy said yesterday. It's you'll never hear about it anyway. So there was a train, I guess a tra- a some train thing that went in between between mm-hmm. Tavares and Sanford, and this guy, this guy Moore, because they found a grave one day over there, just and there's graves because it's, it, it, there was a little town there. And uh, anyway, so they found a they found a grave there. And the story behind the grave is that this gentleman, Luke Moore, um, he died on the train going to going to Sanford. And they just they pulled stopped him. him. They pulled up. The, the, this town was a stop. They pulled him off and they buried him not too far from the train station. And there was a grave marker. Um, that said, also from that area, from Rock Springs Road, 
little known fact, Rock Springs Road is another road they told us about yesterday. There was a commissioner back in 1880 something, okay, Orange County, I think this was like an Orange County Road Commissioner. Mm -hmm. He was actually a freed slave. Love it. Imagine that back in 1880 something, and he was the one who helped put together and make sure that the road from from that area, Wakaiwa, mm -hmm. where there was a little town and all that. Rock Spring going down to Orlando, and there was another road they, they highlighted yesterday. He was responsible. He was a commissioner for roads. Imagine a freed black man in 1880 becoming commissioner of Orange County. Love it. Can't say it was a lot of Democrats back then. I mean, not, I mean, there were. They're the old Southern Dixiecrats, right? Mm -hmm. But the, you know the times. The times yeah. were the times. And you man, what an accomplishment. And I, that, those are things I'd like to hear about more in history. But it was just so cool. Anyways. OG, can I ask you a question? Sure. Who did he just sound like then from a television series? Uh -oh. Back in the eighties, uh -oh. where everybody knows your name, you just uh, oh uh, Norm, no, uh, the oh. the mailman, <laughs> Cliff Clavin. Cliff Clavin. Cliff Clavin. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> just tell I us some obscure story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a guy on a train. Yeah, so. I just listen. It's just the, it's the little things that stick out to me. Yeah, no, Cliff was always really great for that stuff. Uh, you know, the other day when I was going to the car park, uh, you know, there's a little thing I saw there, and uh, let me tell you the story behind that. Ah, shut up, Cliff. <laughs> Anyways, um, hey, listen, the show sometimes is about just having fun. You know what I mean? And I gave a little bit of smoking truth. Those are details that people don't know about. And it's the truth. All right, so. Cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I don't know why that tickled me so much. It's all it just good. did. It's because it the show, you know. It's all good. But uh, anyways, uh, the environment, it's important stuff. So. Listen, I want to tell you this. You know what I'm sick of? Yeah. Let me tell you what I'm sick of. Because mm. I just heard something night before last, and I heard it brought up again by another commissioner. Okay. Okay. I am sick and tired, sick and tired, mm. both, both mm. sick and mm. tired. You could be either or. No, but I'm you're both. Not, but you're both. I'm both. Okay. I'm just there are times when I'm just sick. <laughs> yeah. There are times when I'm just tired. Yeah. But at this juncture, I'm sick and tired. Okay. All right. So do you want to know what I'm sick and tired of? Uh, you've already led me up to this. You've, you've taken me down, taking me down that path. So please. I am sick and tired. Mm. of developers coming mm. in front of commissions mm -hmm. asking for a rezoning, mm -hmm. okay? Because we have great plans. This is what we're doing. We want a rezoning, right? Yeah. That sounds great. Follows our comprehensive plan. Looks good. Future mm -hmm. land use, all that. Check, check, right? We say, okay. Then they come back. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, we didn't really mean that we wanted to do that. But since we have yeah. this zoning now, That's now we're going to change what we're going to do. And let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I'm on to you. <laughs> and if you think I'm talking to you, I am talking to you. Oh. And there's going to be a nice, nice little surprise coming up for mm -hmm. you. Because I know what you're trying to do. Yeah. I'm just going to put that I, out there. What I worry about. It's not just me either. No, 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 no. Listen. I, I, I know I, that you've heard. I, there's a lot of people, and you're not the only one. I've, there's mm -hmm. somebody else I, I can, that comes to mind that you and I have talked about before. Yep. This individual um, railed against it in, in their, own, their own city. We're pissed. Um, and just said, look, you can't do this because, number one, number one, as elected officials, you all have to answer to your constituents. It's not like Tallahassee. And this is what they say. This is what the developer says. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing with it. We just want to sell it. I don't know what we're doing with it. Then you don't get a rezoning until you figure out and you tell yeah. me how you're developing my city. You don't get, you're entitled to do whatever you want, but I'm entitled yeah. to the information that makes me make a decision for my constituents. That's when, so I asked you, so this little dirty secret on one of the first episodes we talked about, right? Which is this whole, you know, the ag rezone, right? Mm -hmm. And I sat there and was just like one day, I'm kind of going, man, I'm driving through Sanford. I see like 10, 15, 20 acres over here. And I see, mm -hmm. and, and then there's like shops and everything else around. I'm going, they got cows and goats on there. Yeah. That's over by Walmart. <laughs> That's right. I know where that is. <laughs> My, oh, gee, you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. And I said, but it's not the only place with the other place, but that one always, always comes to mind. I'm sitting there going, oh, man. So then I asked somebody about it once uh, at one point in time, and I forgot who, but anyways, I asked them, and I just said, how were they able to get, like, dude, they're not really farming that land. It's like, they're right in the middle of, like, a lot of commercial development. And they go to me, well, that's what the owner does. To, you know, they, they get that, so they can get the ag exemptions. They don't have to pay not high taxes. Tax. Yep. They don't have to pay any, well, I think maybe it's minimal or no, I don't either know or minimal taxes, right? Very minimal taxes. And I go, and, and I said, oh, 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 
And then how long? Well, until they sell the property. I said, well, then the city, the local government's missing out on those taxes. I said, yeah, but that the idea is that they'll, they'll develop it at one point. And I said, okay. So I bought that for a little bit. And you I said, never recapture the revenue that you've lost. You never make up for it. Unless you want to give me $10 million on top of everything that you're doing, yeah. there is no way to recapture. And, and so I, I was like, okay. And I said, but man, but how long, I mean, how long is long enough? You know, mm-hmm. and at some point in time, you're going to go, no, guys, like we got to develop, you know, like mm-hmm. we want to move along. And then you got this, you know, one or two property owners that may hold out for some sort of like unimaginable dream that they have and then I'm going, I'm going like well how long is long man like everywhere else is developed except for your property mm-hmm. and then we want so the little secret is that's what they do yep. and I'm not always a big fan of it and if it's short term I'll, I'll buy into it as a pro business person I'll buy into it I know there's gonna be some lost revenue there for the for the local government, but then I go, how long do you hang on to that, banking that away, banking that away, and then wait, wait, wait. and then when they finally do they decide they're gonna develop it, right? Then you get those land developers, not all of them, but there's there's enough there's that come enough. There's, there's enough that come back and go, well, you know, I know you guys just approved this last week, right? Mm-hmm. But however, this section over here, we want to do this. Well, that's not what you that's guys got to prove. That's not what you said. Exactly. That's not what you said. That's not what you guys got to prove for. That's not what, exactly. And I kind of go, no, well, you can't. But wait a minute. How are we changing this midstream? Because if you're going to change it midstream, then everything has to get changed Takes midstream. Back. Yes. Right? Yep. Like you have to change everything. Yep. So what are you putting there? How is it impacting local schools? How is that impacting our tax base? They don't base? care. Yeah. But, the, but no, but it's not that they don't care. And you know what, Dana? I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't necessarily, I blame them somewhat. I don't necessarily blame them. You know who I blame a little bit? That commission that's sitting there allowing that nonsense to go by and, and going, hey, you're robbing your own people who live in that city right now. You're robbing them. That's what you're doing. Well, let me tell you this. I had this conversation. I, you know this. I've had it at the county council. Mm. Okay. I've had it at city commission. I'm go- You know what I'm going to do this year? Mm. I'm going to go on a cru- crusade. Uh-oh. I'm going to go on a crusade. <laughs> I'm going on a crusade this year. Mm. I'm going to go to every city in Volusia County and go to their commission meeting. Mm. I'm going to talk to them about concurrency, mm-hmm. school concurrency. It's a thing. Yeah. The people are starting to pay attention to this now. Yeah. I've, get, I've gotten asked about this now. Yeah. Right? Not only that, but there's been a study released just here in Deltona. You know that we need two more fire stations. You know that we need, according to what the protection, okay. according to what protection statistics say, okay. for a city of our size, we are lacking fire personnel and fire stations. Yeah. Now, with that being said, um, I, I just I can't believe we keep passing this development and check. Well, what, hap- what happens is then when you miss out on that tax base, guess what you can't do anymore? You can't pay for the extra station or whatever and the extra firefighters you think you're going to need in order to, for that level of protection. And so, listen, the concurrency thing and just folks are just, you know, if you're if you're a first time listener, if you've been listening for a little bit, you kind of know. But the concurrency thing is an issue where basically. You know, developers have to go ahead and get the approval from the local school district because the school district has to sit here and say, yes, it, when you build that development, that that area, elementary school, and the schools in general can handle that growth, right? And so what happens a lot of times, if you, what's been happening in many cases, right, and, and keep in mind, Florida, we're having rapid growth. And so schools sometimes, they, I don't know how, and I'm not going to blame anybody specifically, I'll just say this because it happens all go over ahead. the state. No, but it happens all over the state. <laughs> Which is that school districts will go ahead and just say, yeah, mm-hmm. without doing a deeper dive, yep. right? Because they they want the tax base, they yep. want the revenue coming in, right? Yep. Property taxes, right? And so forth. Until they realize, uh-oh, they're building a bigger development than we thought. And we're not, and so nobody's accounting for the extra money that they're losing on that. Plus the cities are losing on that, right? Because they're going with an they're original not paying study. The prop, they're not paying the prop shares. And second of all, they're not taking into account the teacher shortage when they factor in yeah. how many kids should go into school. Yeah. Yeah, you can build a building to put, you know, I'm just going to say this. You can build a building to put a thousand kids yeah. in, but they're not factoring in that they have a deficit of teachers to teach the children that they're putting in a well, school. So the argument, so I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not saying I don't agree with this or not, but I'm just saying the argument then some will make was, well, you we can know. transfer them to another school. Well, no, that, you know, if, you know, like, hey, look, we're growing very fast, you know, and eventually, you know, we're going to catch Shut up. up. And let's just say, okay, let's, let's just say, let's just say for argument's sake, just for the sake of argument for right Why now. Why do you do that? You know you're saying for argument's because, sake is going to get no, me all like fired no, because up. I want to put it out there for okay, everybody. Okay, go ahead. Even Let's do it for argument's because sake. Because there are some people who are not going to agree with that uh, with, with, the, with that general. Um, do you know what they, they say too, the Eric? They say that there is only 0.25 children per apartment. Know, are know, they kidding? Know, people that, breed like yeah. freaking rabbits. So are even you if kidding you want, me? Even if you want that argument that we'll eventually catch Especially up. Especially with the whole no abortion thing. Over that next decade, over that next decade, 
you're playing catch up and guess what happens there's yeah, a diminishment there's a diminishment in a- education even if you even if you come to me and go well in 10 years we'll catch up what about that 10 year period though you're losing that value of the education in that 10 year period why don't you guys why don't you guys take that on at the state level eric you know enough people up there that you could take this message and you could have people talking about this at a state level what is the downside for this for republicans nothing well yeah okay let me back up i'm a liar yeah. I, 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 what i'll say is this is that look it, it, it obviously because it, they because here's the thing People want charter schools. They want they want more choices in education because they feel like the education system is failing and losing. So therefore, nobody's really putting the work into um, bolstering public education. I think look, it, it could be. It's probably a little bit of a all. Uh, I'll say this: there's a lot that happens in Tallahassee where you can just sit here and make an argument in case it's all of the above, right? And just say, hey, look, you know, why continue to expand a program that you know many feel is not adequate and is not being adequate enough, or that parents want to go a different way with their kids and so forth? So why continue to? You, we'll bolster it as much as we can, but we're not going to go crazy either. I'll just still make the case in the day that when you have a certain level of growth. And if it moves fast enough, if you're not careful, it will get away from you. And I don't care if you're a private school, charter, public charter, or traditional public school. It doesn't matter. The kids are going to pay a price for it at some level. And because the kids, the kids, no matter what, the kids have to go somewhere in one one of the one of the buckets. It's either homeschool, private school, charter school, public, traditional public school. They're going to have to go in one of those buckets. And somebody along the way is going to pay the price for that one. I find it rich that 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 really conservative Republicans talk about, let's get back to old fashioned values. Let's get back to, you know, when things were good, let's get back to when things were proper. But yet one of the basic building blocks of that regime, if you were, is education and public education and good education. And I don't, I I just, I don't really understand that whole thing that, but then again, these are the same people that will okay new developments instead of working yeah. on like well i would know. also argue too that then i'll just you know i'll say this yeah. the other argument i'll have too is just that i think the challenge and the challenge for me personally is um is the teachers unions i'm not a fan everybody knows i'm not a fan of them uh, i think they do them they do themselves a big disservice a lot of times and and it's and and i've seen instances where you'll have people who want to come in and innovate as best they can within the system and then you have somebody going no 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 don't do that because you do that, they want more. And you'll have a younger set of teachers going, but we want to because we want to be part of that innovation. And you have the old the old guard going, no, 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 no. And that to me is a bunch of nonsense. So anyways, it is what it is. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, anyway, so <coughs> your crusade, I think, is a noble one. Mm-hmm. I think you should start educate a lot of these uh, cities on it and, uh, and let them know that there are... There's three things I'm working on. Impacts that I don't. I don't know if they're if they're always thinking about. You know what I mean? There's there's five things I'm going to work on this year, and I say this year Mm -hmm. because next month we'll have a year Mm -hmm. till elections. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. This is what I'm working on. Number one. (laughs) Domestic violence. Good. You know I've been talking about that a lot. This is a good one. Now with the advent of the crap show, which is the the Mm-hmm. Beacon Center, yep. and yep. Um, listen, that's you know you need the wisdom of Solomon to figure that out, right? There is we need more domestic violence shelters. Period. I won't comment on that, but the whole incident. Other than this, there is if they're not, I know they've been there for some time, but if they're not doing their part, and um, and I've seen other nonprofits within human trafficking, whatever, go wayward um, because uh, for whatever reason. And I think we need to hold their feet to the fire. And But I agree that whether it be them or anybody else for that matter, and I think that there need to be a shelters for, because it's a problem. There does, and here's the thing. It's a problem. Here's the thing. You got to acknowledge the fact that it's a problem. It is a problem, and here's the thing. Nobody wants the government to get in, involved with that. Here's They want it to be private sector, but then they want to kvitch and not give mm-hmm. money to the nonprofit to do a job yeah. properly. So shame on the state. The state it's about to get undue funding or the feds are about to undo funding too that funds our victim advocates mm. okay they're about to do it that away with that they are at 120 million they want by next year to be at 
uh, 96 million for the state. Yeah. And then after in 2025, they want it dropped down to $60 million in funding for the whole state for, and you know what? Somebody's going to have to pick up the slack I don't there. have a problem. Listen, I don't have a problem with the nonprofits doing it. I really don't. My challenge always is with them. Is they just need to be very careful because this is what I've always told people. If you don't do right by what you're doing, the state will come in and drop the hammer. And then everybody's going to complain afterwards when either things are getting shut down or they re-divert the funds a certain way. If Where you're they, there, how, how would they re-divert the funds? Well, they'll go to some other, the, some Who? larger blanket. Uh, like, tell me you know, in Volusia County, who's going to do I, that? Well, in Volusia, I don't know. I, I there hear you. you. Go. I, know, I know that. I hear you. I'm just saying, be mindful of the dollars you're, you get, you're getting in. Be mindful of the fact, make sure that, uh, I don't say this across we don't anybody. Take, here's the thing. Eric, here's the thing. We don't take domestic violence seriously in this state. I have been at, at every single CompStat for, I know, at least the last two years. And we get in CompStat meetings, and we talk about domestic violence is on the rise. Every CompStat, every quarter, domestic yeah. violence has gone up in our community. Yeah. But does Deltona have a domestic violence shelter? No. Yeah. No, Deltona doesn't have a domestic violence shelter. It, it, we don't have that. We don't have funding for it. They're doing away with more funding. And not only that, did you know that in Volusia County, judges are not required yeah, I know to we about before, yeah. keep their record as to whether they've ordered uh, or they have signed an order of protection. Mm -hmm. I'm working on that also. Myself and Chase Tremont are working okay. on that. Okay, we've I've, talked about that. He is like, what? Well, I think to your point, so, so then Dana, here's a good, then this is, what I'm hearing and what you're saying as well, too, that obviously when it comes to the issue of, of uh, whether it be human trafficking or domestic violence, let's say domestic violence, right? Mm -hmm. It has to be multi-pronged um, because yep. there's no one silver bullet. Look, the money coming in is the money coming in or whatever. Maybe there's another place. Maybe we need. Maybe we, we do need to build one more uh, location for, for folks in, in Volusia. But my point is that So then I would also then say, okay, beyond the money, what can we be doing as a state policy-wise to ensure that me. we're... So, well, I'm just, well, one of them could be the issue with the judges. Maybe that's an issue we need to look into. Then here's the thing. You know what? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a city commissioner. Yeah. I have told wiser people about this, and they go, oh, really? But nobody has picked up the gauntlet. I mean, you know, state rep yeah. did. Yeah. Chase. He said, I know he says he wants to look because he he's, he's familiar it. with it because I think his kids or his daughter or somebody's involved in some capacity. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's so. abysmal. We don't really yeah. take it. We don't. It, anyway, so much for the patriarchy of this well, state. Well, what it is. I, listen, I'm going to go. I'm going I'm 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 to jump off my man couch. I'm going to jump off my man couch for a second. I'm going to say this. Yeah. I would make the I will make the case that um, and I'll make the argument and some some people wait till men like start getting the shit beat well, out. Well, I was just I was just I was just going to say that some people are not going to like what I'm going to say, but I'm going to tell you this right now. You see enough men getting their, uh, mm -hmm. I gotta throw, I guess, money. But anyways, you see enough men getting their, their asses whooped, and then it's a whole different ball game, yeah. right? And mm -hmm. and I hate to say it that way because you're right. If there's enough out there happening, then why can't we be doing a little more? I'm not saying it's because men aren't getting their ass beat, and that's the problem. That's the problem. Maybe. Men aren't getting their ass beat. Maybe. Men were getting their ass beat. You know what? Too. Mm -hmm. You know what? Too. Yeah. If you had to push. Yeah. A cantaloupe out of your pee hole, y'all would have a different stance on childbirth also. Y'all would have a different stance on abortion if y'all had to go through that. You know, and it's for simple. Some, here's for the thing. Yeah, for some, here's maybe, the thing. but some Listen of it's biblical. So. Listen to me. Whatever. Yeah. You want to yeah, throw down with me about the Bible? Let's no, get it's into not it. that. I'm just telling you. It's a real Listen, thing, though. But here's but the thing. Listen, yeah. here's the thing, too. We need to talk about, when we talk about health care, you got a choice here. Okay? Republicans, you have a chance, a choice here. I need you to either start funding vasectomies, mm. okay, or completely funding birth control and making it available. Mm. 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 Can you do one of those two things? I don't know about it. I don't know. I don't, listen, I don't know about either one of them, but whatever. You know, that's all I'm going to say. I think there's a, I think there's different ways to, to attack it. Tell, so. tell me, Eric. I think just the fact that I think that the more listen, this is part of the problem we always have in this country too, is that we don't talk about certain issues enough. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm I'm a big believer. Once you have that conversation, but we don't, but everybody likes to say it, but we don't. I'll be honest with you. We don't have enough conversation about a number of issues. We, we just, don't. We, it's soundbite stuff always, right? Domestic violence will be a soundbite, and, but nobody's ever, but we're not having a Because you're a pervert. If you have, here's the thing. By extreme right wing, mm. Christian, white, male Republicans. And notice <laughs> I put everything there. Yeah, you you're a, you're a pervert. You're a pervert if you want to talk about sexuality in a way that would help us figure out things. You know what I'm saying? We don't we don't want to talk about well, that. We can't I, talk I, about I think that. it just depends how you address the issue of sexuality. I just to me 
I think. I mean, there's enough men in Tallahassee that know about sexuality, right? You no, would think I know that, but there's. Those, I think yeah. but there's a responsible way and there's an irresponsible way. I think some of the irresponsible ways talking about it is what you see sometimes, and I know those are the extremes. What you see on TV or this, that, and the other, and people, yeah. oh, we want to have a conversation, and then they go, they go off the deep end on, se- on talking about sexuality. I think there's a responsible way to do it. I, do I just don't think we don't do it enough. That's I my. That's my. Well, all that stuff needs to be broken down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I want to tell you this too. I had um, have had been having conversations regarding the book ban. Mm-hmm. Okay, the latest that there was people that came to the last board of education meeting to read. I know some of the moms for Liberty mm-hmm. did. I know that I talked to Jennifer Waldo Kelly before that. I talked to Greg Gimbert. I've mm-hmm. talked to a couple of educators. I've talked to at least two school board members mm-hmm. about this. I've talked to state lawmakers about this. And, you know, here's the thing there is, there are books available to high schoolers. That I don't agree with. Okay. Now, you know how I am about First Amendment rights. Mm-hmm. You know how I am. You know how democratic I am yeah. about that. You know how left I am about that. Yeah. But some of the stuff, if I'm reading what I was given, the silver sheets or whatever, to read about these books and the passages were there, I got a problem with that. When yeah. you start going into graphic description of the sexual act, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's way different than just talking about that, making a statement that they had sex. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you're talking about in, in a book. And I think that some of the stuff is getting very convoluted in the respect that the sad thing is that the the alphabet community is paying for it, mm. right? Because it all looks like it's all intertwined, and it's not. We have a lot of different um, things here, right? Now, when it comes to book choice, mm. uh, first of all, it got into the school somehow. Yeah. It's state approved, right? Okay. And who's been in control of the state? Republicans. Well, listen, it's a, it's, it's a good argument to make. Look, they 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 approved it, so hey, we said yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, go and ahead. so now it could be. Now, listen, I'll also say. This this it could just be now remember some of that stuff is bureaucratic in nature so it means that it got to a certain level before the commissioner of education or anybody else sees it and they're going oh okay yeah these are you know for for 12th graders yeah yeah and they get a whole swath of books and they go yeah it looks all you know the content whatever and they don't understand the details of some of that stuff and so even even the elected officials and the commissioner may be taken aback by and kind of go wait a minute i don't know if if i was ever intending to improve that and it happens Mm -hmm. What I get concerned with as we're doing, the, as we're moving forward, I look, I'm all for age appropriate. And when I mean age appropriate is this, age appropriate in the actual content, mm-hmm. not that someone, you know, you have a kid. I've heard this argument. Somebody made the argument to me a little bit. Um, I, I think I was talking to my son about this. So look, Juni B. Jones is a book and mm-hmm. you know, what I don't want to see Juni B. Jones, I think is age appropriate for first graders and so forth. Right. But what I don't want to see happen is Juni B. Jones getting taken out because, well, it's not really age appropriate. Well, in what sense, you know, for let's say kindergarten, right. And my son will argue, well, if you get a kindergarten kid who can read at a certain level, don't you want to push them to read at a first grade level where Juni B. Jones is at? And because we're going to use the guise of, con- you know, is it age appropriate, right? Not suited for, for kindergartens because it's a first grade book. But Junie B. Jones is, I'm just using that as one example. Like, Junie B. Jones is like a book that I, you know, taught my kids on, you know what I mean? And it's just like, hey, so I don't want to see a book like Junie B. Jones or teachers feeling like they can't bring Junie B. Jones into the classroom. Like, Mm -hmm. that's wrong. What I talk about is content from the perspective of either whether it be sexual in nature or certain discussions that should be left for maybe upper middle school or maybe high school, those things. That is what I worry about. But, and I hope we're not, I hope in this whole process of whether getting rid of certain books from certain grades or just removing them from schools completely, that other books are not getting swept up. Like there was one on the um, on Roberto Cle- uh, Clemente up in Jacksonville that got pulled out of the book because there were certain topics. And Roberto Clemente will tell you that look when he when he came to, um, stateside as a, as a Puerto Rican uh, baseball player, and he's you know Puerto, uh, Roberto Clemente is um, one who you could tell is a very dark skinned individual, and so he faced a, a number of the same challenges that traditional African Americans were facing, you know, and, and just people in co- of color were, were facing at that period, and so that's a real thing to not acknowledge that. Is a bunch of BS. That's critical race that's, theory. That's whitewashing. That's that's those critical are real race. things we need to have discussions about. Yeah. That's critical. Well, I think race criti- you know, I think well, no, I, but see, I don't, I, I don't think so. And I don't think the average person, but somehow somebody and look, and I'm not saying there aren't extremists on our side on the Republican side who are looking at kind of going, ah, I don't really want to talk about that. Mm-hmm. And in case, well, that's not really critical race theory. There's other issues, a lot of issues I have with just in, in general. But when that's what I worry about is somebody's books getting swept up in some of this, and like, no, I want to hear about Roberto Clemente's challenges because, damn it. 
happened. It happened in our country. And the only way you do not repeat a certain thing, bad thing, is by making sure you talk about it so you don't repeat it again, right? That's what they always say, right? Because if not, history will repeat itself. Eric. So that's... Eric, you know, I'm yeah. sorry. But your governor thinks that slavery was good uh, education for some people. It taught them certain skills. I don't know how all that. He allowed, yeah, listen, he allowed it to happen on his watch. So the buck stops with him. So I'm going to just, it's his fault. I hear it. All right. That's, okay? that's I'm just going to write it. Well, this, on his and, fault. and the only good thing about this show is, and just about being in this country, is yeah. you have that right to say that. <laughs> I may not always necessarily agree, but you have that right to say that, my dear. Well, here's the thing. I, I know that this is going to go on. Yeah. There, there are a couple of uh, issues, right, with the, with the book ban thing. Mm. And, um, here's the thing. I want to work with whoever, yeah. whoever yeah. is looking out for our children. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Number one. Yeah. Right. So I, I want to do that. I want to, yeah. I want to talk about that. Um, I don't want inappropriate age, inappropriate stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't want our children exposed to that. If you would want to make that available in your home, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's you. That's parental yeah. right. Right. Yeah. And, but, but here's the thing too, that there is, I believe that we can reach an agreement, right. If, if cooler heads prevail and talk about it, but you can't go, here's the thing. We have forgotten how to talk about it as parents. Yeah. We're always talking about it as politicians. We're not talking well, about here, it as well, parents. Here's, here's one of the beauties of this show, right? Obviously, we had Jennifer on, Jennifer mm -hmm. Waldo Kelly, mm -hmm. along with Jennifer Dickinson, and we had Kim on, and, mm -hmm. and I know Kim is their treasurer, Kim Short. Anyways, mm -hmm. one of the good things here is I think there's an opportunity, all right, because I know that you had concerns with Moms for, you know, for Liberty and, and some of the things, and each, and it's already been stated, each chapter is a little bit different, but there's some general themes there, right? The best part about this is that you have an opportunity, Dana McCool, to have a good constructive dialogue because you've had several conversations with Jennifer already, uh, mm -hmm. Jennifer Kelly, and have a good co a constructive conversation with her to figure out, okay, where's that middle mm -hmm. ground, Jennifer? I'm not saying what you guys are doing 100% is wrong or, or bad in one way or another, um, but I, and I would say, I would argue, right, that you're saying, hey, I would agree with you on some of the stuff, but where, well, I just want to make sure that we're not sweeping all other I'll things so. yeah. that may not necessarily have to be yeah. because some people are taking it in a different direction. Like, I, you guys may be here, but somebody's listening to you and they're going, I'm going out. And I say this about both sides. Republicans and Democrats both do this. They hear something and then they run with it with some way, somewhere else. And you're going, dude, that's not what I meant by that. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? And so I think there's an opportunity for you to have that good constructive. Yeah. I, I, I want to continue it on. I, you know, I, here's the thing too. I get to choose for my child. Mm -hmm. But I don't get to choose for all your children. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's that. And if we can get out of the politics and get back into the family portion of this, that would be great. You know, I mean, I just, that we politicize so much and I'm just really ready to move past that. So I'm working on that. I'm working on domestic violence. I am wanting to um, work on some mental and substance abuse. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had, um, if you don't think that we need mental health services, look no further than a young lady taking her life you know, yeah. and within the last 48 hours, you know, and when somebody takes their life, it means that first of all, they've not had the proper resources around them, mm. that they made a choice based on a way that they felt right then they felt trapped. They didn't feel any other way. And I've had two people in my life com commit suicide. My mom committed suicide mm. and I had a husband that also committed suicide. Yeah. So when I talk about the impact of that, the lasting impact of that, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm all for it. Man. I it, think and we, we need, need to do to more, to but beyond that, I also think because if not, we'll just keep doing more and more and more without ever exploring what are some of the root causes of some of this stuff. Because yeah. I just feel like mental health is uh, mental health issues are on the rise, uh, and it's not just because we're just a acknowledging it even more. I just think there is something. We have going a bunch on. of hopeless people. I just think there's a lot that goes. I think there's a lot of different things that play into. It. I think social media plays into it. I think there's a lot of other things that play into it. And if we don't figure out a way to deal with that responsibly, mm -hmm. we'll just keep paying and paying. Which I don't. As I've already said, look, we need to allocate do dollars for this. But we'll just keep paying, paying, paying with ever, without ever dealing with the root cause and trying to figure out how to deal, deal with that responsibly. Yeah. And here's you know? the thing, too, which is sad, yeah. that we have legislated ourselves into thinking that we need smaller government. Yeah. And let me tell you what I mean by that, okay? If we had city-sponsored places, community places that people could go in, you know, I've been trying to work on that for three years without any luck i would like for us to have a social services hub where all of our nonprofits could come in right yeah. and we have a building where everything is together miami-dade has done an incredible job of that they have the 
role model for for doing that and i really wish that as a community that we would stop pushing stuff off onto nonprofits because here's what happens not only do you have an extra layer of doling out money here mm. okay and you don't have you have control over how much you give but all of that other stuff can happen like why does why don't we farm out the health department yeah. Why don't we farm out the Volusia County Health Department? Because they have found a sustainable model, right? Yeah. So same thing. Why can't we do where we concentrate the money instead of passing it off, that we build programs within the county and within the cities, that we get money for that and staff them with people where there's like no, well, you know, I, I just. But yeah, but, but listen to this. But so beyond okay. beyond the, the, this uh, hiring more city employees for all this stuff, here's the deal. So, for example, we have a, a, a organization like SMA that's here in, mm-hmm. in Volusia, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, my cousin once told me, you know, and he's someone who's, you know, pretty conservative about a lot of when it comes to the financial stuff, right? And, and less government and so forth and so on and more moderating on other issues. But when he, came, when he talked about health care, right, he said, look, man. Whether you want to go a, an approach of like, you know, a little bit more Republican idea type approach to healthcare, or one where government's involved and maybe it's like a Medicare type of system for all. He said, the problem in this country is this. We have to have a real conversation and figure out what as Americans are we willing to pay for and then commit to it and do it. Mm-hmm. The reason why I bring that up is you have an organization like SMA, which probably could expand to several different locations in Volusia, but then the cities have got to figure out, instead of hiring more staff and then putting more people on like, you know, FRS and other things, whatever the case may be, there's an organization, but then that means the cities have got to commit those dollars to helping them because they have a model. I believe they have a model that works. So why not then have the cities help fund them so they can grow and expand to all the services? Because the cities, you know what the cities are doing now? The cities are making up for all of the money that the county is rolling back so they can look sexy yeah. and it's a trickle down effect the feds say screw you we're not giving any more money to the state the state says screw you county we're not giving any more money to you and then the county says screw you city wow. they push more and more services my, off to the my city my father my father told me about that a long time ago and he says all it is is a little bit of a game on back it's a shell forth. game uh, eric hey, government's gonna pay more so said state says no we don't have to pay more government said we'll pay less so state says okay we'll pay a little more but we're not going to do it ourselves we'll push it down a little further on down the line and so what I'll just tell you is, once again, I go back to this. If you don't listen, I have no problem with dedic- dedicating dollars towards organizations that are already doing something and helping them expand because it's a model that works. If you don't want to be in the business, if you're a Republican, you don't want to be in the business of hiring more staff for the city and growing that government there, right? Then fine. Then at least then set aside monies so that... Because that's what we talk about all the time as Republicans, right? Hey, don't always have the government do it all, right? Because we think a lot of times, and, and, I, and I personally believe this too, that it shouldn't always be government's responsibility, and I don't think government always does it right. Nonprofits, like for-profit companies, many of most of them have a way to do this, and it's, it can be a cost saver, and they can get it done. It probably at a mass, much a faster pace than the government can. But then you got to fund it. You can't just sit here and say, let the nonprofit, let, hey, have the nonprofit do it. But then you don't want to give money. You know what they're constantly doing, struggling? Constantly struggling to find dollars Mm -hmm. from rich benefactors Mm -hmm. who are already trying to give, who are already giving money to a number of other organizations. And there's a constant, and I'm not saying that we should, we shouldn't still do that. I'm not saying we shouldn't still do that. And I think that we should still get, I think. uh, It's the chase for the best sugar daddy. Let's let's, let's donate. But here's the problem. When they start, when they start getting those, here's what a lot of nonprofits do too, which I don't always like, but, and I think I understand the reasons why is mission. um, They change the mission a little bit or they get that mission creep, right? Which is like, wow, man, we're not getting enough money. So let's, uh, you know what? Let's add another program because we can get money from this pot over here. And now you know what they find themselves doing? They're no longer just about domestic violence or just about mental health. Now they offer mental health. Oh, plus we got a workforce program. Isn't that sad? And they got this and they got that. Isn't that sad? And they all put it under the guise of, we're doing a wraparound service. No, you no. So once again, I go back to your point, which is, I'm, I don't dis- totally disagree with you, my dear. I just think that for cities and, and county governments, I think there is a model, which is you got to commit to it, you got to fund it, but there are nonprofits that are doing the job already and doing the work. We got to help them out. I don't disagree with that, but don't, you know. All right, I, here, let me yeah, do something. Let me do yeah. something. I'm going to do a PSA real quick. Okay. 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 This is a PSA for Volusia because County. There's one other thing I want to talk to you about. Okay, you, you ready? Yeah, All right. 
Hi, my name is Dana McCool. I'm 59 years old. I'm in search of a sugar daddy. Here are your requirements. I just need a domestic violence shelter. That would be great. And a food bank. That would be amazing for, I don't need a car. I don't need any of that. So just a building so that I can house services. That would be fantastic. Okay. Wink, wink. There, you, there go. you go. There's a I'm PSA. Done. There's a PSA. Let's see. Hey, cities, step up to the plate, man. I yeah. know everybody's feeling the pinch a little bit sometimes, but I think there's more. more Listen, you do. know what I'm really proud of? Mm. Stacy Cantu, I love you. <laughs> you are my hero. Uh, Commissioner Cantu yeah. brought in her, not her program. Uh-huh. It is her program, right? But the veteran homeless, okay, yep. she brought in that. The city of Deltona has pledged $25,000, uh, Barracks of oh, Hope. To yes, Barracks she, yes, of Hope. She, yes, she told me about this. Yep. Yes, yep, yep, yep. And I got to meet some pretty incredible war heroes. Yeah. And it was a very emotional and very touching night the other night. And I'm so mm. proud of Deltona for understanding Good. how important that is. So, I know she was making the pitch to Deltona. Yeah. I'm, Shout I'm, out to you, Commissioner Cantu. You're amazing, and you just worked so like hard one for or, there's like one or two other cities I think that stepped up to the plate, mm-hmm. and I think it's I think it's a good program. And like she had told me, this is not just an East Side thing. No. We we take in these folks, take in folks from everywhere, everywhere. all over the county. Yep. And so, but once again, because once I don't want to get caught up in territory nonsense. Please, folks, do not get caught up in, in, in territory yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Like the fuel farm, I may feel it doesn't impact me directly at this moment in time, but it doesn't mean I can't still sit here and say that's a bad idea for one of our neighbors to the north. We've written a letter of support against the fuel farm. And I told Mayor Partington Mm. uh, that, I mean, he did a good job. Mm. You know what I mean? I yeah. sit on TPO with him and I told him the other day, you did a fantastic job of supporting your residents. Mm-hmm. That was a case of listening to the residents yes. and what they hundred percent because I know they yeah. weren't, I, know, I heard early on, they weren't a hundred percent, but yeah. they eventually listened to the residents day and they went, I think once they started digging in deeper, they got it. They went, yeah, this is probably not a yeah, good and idea. And listen, I want to give a shout out too to, to, uh, Carmen and Mayor Chazé and mm-hmm. DeBerry, you're right. It's live local, act is screwing us all. Thank you for bringing that up. The losing a, I a saw multi-million yes. dollar project they're going to be losing. Developers are using that to bully already. I hear stuff coming down our our pipeline, and we, listen, we are together on that yeah. SB 102 being a horrible idea. Um, I hope that the League of Cities, the Florida League of Cities, go back and they re-examine what their position is. I hope that Volusia League of Cities would go in and re-examine the position because everybody has admittedly said that it's bad. It's a bad bill. I will say this is that I think it's a, I think the cities need to go to their legal cities folks. That's who rep- help rep- mm-hmm. represent them, right? I think they just need to keep talking to the state reps and others and saying, look, this is where we're losing. I know what you guys so are trying to thing, accomplish. Some of the state reps, we asked at the legislative delegation and then Webster Barnaby was like, nah, I, I like it. I ain't going to no. do anything. I, I, listen, I know... Well, once again, I'm going to go back to this. Listen, Sharon, you that, got that wrong. That conversation from the cities needs to happen. And and I think to the point that on the, where the city of Barry is going to potentially losing out on, mm-hmm. on a project that's going to bring them um, revenue for their residents with to do other things, right, for the city. Mm-hmm. I think examples like that need to be cited to these folks and saying, look, this is what they're doing, man. Mm-hmm. They are finding a way to bully us. You guys have given them that, you kind of given them that tool, whether you believe it or not, or whether you, that was your intent or not, they're using it against us and it's hurting our cities. Mm-hmm. You can make the complaint all day long about like, you know, some cities are just too like, you know, oh, it's it's, good. it's a, too much of a process. So if you want to, if you want to, you know, if you want to streamline that process and then that was your goal with the bill, that's fine. Then we need to find things and then we need to go back and tweak it and, pro- and figure out ways how we can get these cities to tweak to to, uh, to fine tune some of that, but there are some issues that are ra- that are coming up, mm-hmm. whether it be the golf courses or, or this particular one. For even forget forget about the golf course for for, for a minute, because um, you know, there's a lot of wealthy people you know, or and or people just who have enough disposable income will live in these communities. There, that's one challenge already. But then this one over here. What where, happens when you get the rich and the poor people together over <laughs> a common yeah. enemy? Yeah, yeah, there, that's what happens. There, there, I think it's something that we're, I think people probably should just take a look at again and just kind of go, okay, where where are some of the areas we need so to so the House Tighten of Representatives and, yeah. could do that and take it to the Senate. You know, I mean, that's mm. what they're there or vice, for. Or vice versa. The Senate could do it, too, and then take it to the House as well. And then, you know, that's where they have those conversations. Yeah, because we're real kumbaya in Florida. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we care about the people in Florida. Well, you know. Wait, hey, wait. Well, yes, we don't have as much of an infighting as we do at the congressional level. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh my God, are they a hot mess right now? Hey, yeah, it's it's a bit of a hot mess. Matt threw a, a 
he threw a bomb in the whole damn thing, and so I was just like, "Holy!" That's cow. what teeny weeny men do. Uh, listen, That's how they make them I, 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 listen, you know, and all the stuff that I've heard come out, even with the that like the uh, rep from Oklahoma, the congressman from Oklahoma, and a couple of people coming out talking about what a dirt bag he is, yeah. showing photos on the floor of yeah. you know his conquest and stuff like that. He's still a piece of crap. And right. you know what? I'm really working on my, when I call Matt Gates just a piece of crap, I'm mm-hmm. really working on being better. I think there's there's a number of points that Matt raised, I think are legitimate points. I think it's the manner in which he went about it. Though the single, single subject bills are super important. Voting on individual aspects of the budget are super important. It's the only way. All this massive stuff you start passing, and then everybody goes, well, you got to read the bill out. I know it's a famous quote from Nancy Pelosi, but it's it, on both sides. I'm just telling you right now, it happens. You pass these big, massive bills, and nobody knows all the details in these bills. And it's just so hard for all these congressional folks, even with their staff and aides and everybody, to kind of go through every little detail. That's the way it's meant to be. And then, Well, listen, and so that's something, look, whether you agree with he, whether he believes that wholeheartedly or not, the point's being raised that, that we need to get back to that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's how something, we know that a developer walked out of here with $10 million. There is something, to be, said, there is something to be said for the message and the deliverer. It's the right message. Maybe the wrong deliverer. But I'm just saying it's the right message. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to be here for at least another year. I'm going to be yeah. digging into the fine print. Always. So on another subject all together. You got 30 seconds. Go for it. All right. Another, uh, what was this whole thing that you wanna, You were talking to me about you think you wanted to address um, before the show? Um, what? This uh, transcript stuff or whatever the case may be. Or whatever. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> so, you know, this city, I'm going to make this quick. Go elevator ahead. speech. Okay. City of Deltona uh-huh. reached a settlement with Nick Lully okay. over some things that Commissioner Burbank said. Mm-hmm. We had a shade meeting about it. A shade meeting is where we meet behind closed doors, and it's usually reserved for matters that are legal, pending yep. legal. Yep. We talk about it because it is pending legal. Yeah. Okay. So we had this, the transcripts are done. Nobody ever asked for these transcripts, really, Mm -hmm. right? Somebody asked for the transcripts, and it's really open conversation that we have. Yeah. First thing that was asked, or the attorney said, oh, he wants to settle for $8,000. And I said, GTF, out of here. Yeah. Right? Well, I said that because it sounded like he said 80000 Yeah. Right? And I was like, eh. And so it was released. Uh, News Journal did an article today that it's out in it. It highlighted that stuff. I wasn't against the settlement. It was painted that I was against the settlement. Okay. It looked like. But no, I wasn't. I thought he said 80000 What I thought was ridiculous. Yeah. If you're going to be a politician, you need to grow a pair and grow mm-hmm. thick skin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we all, that's like <laughs> equally applicable to mm-hmm. men and women. You have to have thick skin when you you're do. in politics. You do. You do. Oh, that's my do. dang. <laughs> do you ever. Okay. Yeah. So that's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The second thing I told said was uh, just with all due respect, Tom S T F U. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just yeah. stop talking on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just stop doing it. You've obviously not mastered that. So, yeah. So stop doing it. So that was out today, and that's what I was talking about. I think about. elected officials should. I think they need to be very careful. Social media can be taken away out of context. Yes. Um, and it, it happens a lot. And so what I'll just say, and, and it frustrates people and I just, well, because you don't know the whole context. Yeah. And so my point in then saying that is I think elected officials need to be very careful when they're saying things on social media mm-hmm. and, um, and just know that once you put it out there, it's, go, it's there forever. It's there forever. Yeah. I've so. been, I've been handy with a couple of words too, but yeah. my thing's about bullies. I, I, you know, yeah. I welcome, come confront me, talk to me about what your concerns are, whatever. But anyways, I was in favor of making, I was in favor of doing the, actual, doing the settlement, doing the settlement, doing right. the deal. Right. So, and it's done. It's over with. May we be better and move on and learn from our mistakes. Move so, on. Learn here. from mistakes. Tomorrow's another right, day. We, we, we got to go. Okay. You have to go pick up the doctor. Yep. Go close, go close it out, my dear. Listen, y'all. Um, it was just, it's been a long, strange couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, it definitely has. It has. We will uh, go back to having our... Um, our roster of guests yeah. come on. I missed you. Like, cause we haven't really talked. Yeah, no, we haven't. Yeah. We I mean, it, I know, but it seems like, it seems like it's been a little tiny bit. Yeah, so, it has, yeah, yeah. but I love you. You know that. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you, girl. I'm with you. I yeah, know. Jake, I appreciate you gave me the shout out during the whole week out there. And I was just like, ah, so I blew My you a little, brother. I blew you a little kiss. I was like, girl, I love you. Don't I worry about you it. I got, you. I, I got you. I got you. Even when I don't agree with you, I got you back. Don't worry about it. Listen guys, remember, thank you for being with us. Join us. Every Tuesday morning when this drops, thank you, OG, for all that. Mike yes. and Mike Productions for Mike always Mike. having us, uh, this, you know, having the smoking truth up, up top. So yep. thank you very much. And listen, just remember this, that if it's important to you. It's important to us. Peace. Take care. Bye. 
The Smoking Truth Podcast, its owners and sponsors, take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guests. Statements or show topics are not necessarily the beliefs of Mike and Mike Productions or the podcast providers and opinions between talk show hosts may differ. It is not our intent to libel, incite, or hurt anyone's feelings. We invite you to write the show's host, Dana McCool, with any feedback or suggestions you have for their shows. These broadcasts are presented and made public as entertainment in the hope that they will be entertaining to the audience.